Myself and my good buddy Bruce went to Las Vegas, Nevada. We shot with uh, Dimitri, who is the creator of the ACSS reticle. So we went out in the Nevada desert and we put uh, steel silhouettes out at very great distances. I'm talking three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to 800 yards away. And a lot of times they were just placed out there at unknown distances so that we had to use the features of the advanced combined sighting system or ACSS reticle to determine approximately how far that target was to accurately engage it. So just Excellent opportunity, great training guys. Um, but one of the things I did before I went out there is I had acquired this optic, okay? So what I did is I BZO'd this optic to this rifle. Now this is my primary go-to rifle. This is my Daniel Defense M4V5. And typically I have this TA31 ACOG on there with ACSS reticle on it. Great optic, great combo. This is my primary go-to weapon. So Soviet paratrooper start falling out of the sky. This is what I'm grabbing to go slay bodies, all right? <laughs> no question, okay? So that's what I wanted to use primarily while I was out there. Just wanted to, you know, it's my primary go-to, wanted to get the experience and the training with that weapon. But I also wanted to test out this new optic. So I did take this optic and I put a uh, QD mount on there so that I could easily throw it on this and shoot with this some. And that's exactly what I did. The first day we were out there, I took off my TA-31 at one point and I threw on this, uh, this Raptor optic. Now, at that point, we had the steel at 400 and 500 yards out, and uh, the sun was starting to go down. So I started shooting with it, okay? And remember, I BZO'd with it back here in Texas, and then I took it off. So when I threw it back on there, you know, I had the concerns of, hey, my zero might not be on. But when I put it back on the rifle and I started shooting at that 400 and 500 yard uh, silhouettes, it was ringing them, all right? And you guys will see that in the video here in a minute. I, you know, no problem. It didn't, I guess it didn't lose zero, okay? So that... You know, the QD mount 
attaching that optic to my rifle was was spot on. So I remember Dimitri's actually kind of taken back by that. He's like, he couldn't believe it was on either. But 400, 500 yards, absolutely no problem blasting that steel. The other thing was, is you know, with the sun going down and it was getting low light and everything, I was having a lot of trouble seeing with my TA31. Just wasn't, it wasn't cutting it, okay? Uh, the low light conditions, the uh, fiber optic, I guess, wasn't taking enough light, so it was very difficult to see the, uh, the target. This sucker right here, that 6X magnification, and it had the illuminated reticle feature, freaking all day long, guys. And that sun, when it got to the point where just before it was just completely black, I could barely see the silhouette, and I was still hitting the steel. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. So this optic is freaking awesome. And we're talking about an optic that's only about $400, right? When you compare that to, you know, my TA31, which is over a thousand, uh, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable what you're getting, guys. This is a first focal plane optic. That's the reason Primary Arms can, has trouble keeping these things in stock. First focal plane, so what that means is when you're adjusting your optic, your, your reticle is adjusting with the magnification as opposed to a second, fo a second focal plane optic where essentially if you want your BDC to be accurate and your range estimating features like on the ACSS reticle to be accurate, it has to be fully magnified to its maximum setting. So in this particular case, it's a six power optic. You would have to have it fully uh, magnified to 6X in order for your, uh, your reticle to be accurate, your bullet drop compensation, all that stuff to be on, right? On these first focal plane optics, that's not an issue. So as you adjust the magnification, your reticle's adjusting with it, and it's always on. It's always, it's always right. All right, that's awesome. It's absolutely badass. And the other thing about that is when you reduce this magnification all the way to 1x, your reticle becomes a small dot-like object. Okay, small donut, red donut-like object, and it's easy for quick target acquisition in CQB. Okay, it's just essentially becomes a red dog red dot for you at that point so it's just a phenomenal optic guys <laughs> unbelievable any event i'm going to do some more shooting with this okay i've thrown it on this uh this ar of mine i tried to build this thing like it was an m16a4 uh, clone essentially but i'm gonna throw it on here and turn the sucker into a little designated marshman rifle and see how it does today okay uh still i'm gonna keep my ta31 on here because you know i'm still a big firm believer in acogs i think they're just a utilitarian optic and you know they're they're great for a wide variety of uh, environments and if you saw the uh, the video that I you know shot out there in Nevada I was still slaying bodies out there in the open desert with that you know fixed four power ACOG so but I will tell you 100% this thing had the advantage out there no question and my day would have been a lot easier had I had this on my optic um, in that particular environment so let's get to it guys um, one thing I want to throw out there is you know Primary Arms has hooked up my subscribers, okay? They provided me with links, so if you guys use my links, you know, it gives my channel credit and the referral for your purchase, and you get free shipping and a free, usually it's like a free mount, depending on which optic, or if it's like a 3X prism, you get like a free uh, anti-reflection device. So, great deal for you guys if you uh, use those links and I'll post in the uh, comment section. So, David, let's get to it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to leave a comment. All right, let's talk nomenclature. So this is the Primary Arms 1 to 6 by 24 ACSS Raptor. As you can see, it looks very similar to the 1 to 8 and 1 to 6 second focal plane optic that they also sell. But again, this is a first focal plane, so it has numerous uh, advantages over that second focal plane in that your ACSS reticle will always be on no matter what your uh, magnification setting is. So starting from the back here, has removable scope cap. As you can see, it has a rear diopter that you can set to your specific eye relief. And then you have your zoom feature. So it's set on one X, you see a little dot here. I can rotate this all the way up to six X or whatever your specific magnification that you want your uh, optic on. Moving forward, you hit the top here, you have your uh, elevation turret and these are screw on type uh, caps. You can make hand adjustable adjustments here. So as you can see, very defined clicks. All right. Also in your top cap is a Spear 2032 battery for your illuminated reticle. Let's just screw right back on. On the left side is your 
adjustments for your illuminator reticle. So it goes from zero all the way to 11. Obviously zero is no illumination, 11 is the highest. Um, I can tell you when I was shooting out there in the desert, I had it on the one or two setting. And I found that was the best one for the specific conditions I was encountering at that time. And then the front here is just your uh, front scope cap, which you can take on and off, whatever you so choose. So that's it, guys. Pretty simple. The acronym KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. Um, excellent optic. <laughs> so in any event, let's, uh, let's move on. Just like in all my primary arms optics videos, let's take a minute to talk about the reticle inside this optic because it's a variation of the Advanced Combined Sighting System or ACSS reticle, which is a reticle I absolutely love and believe is one of the most utilitarian combat reticles out there. This particular scope and reticle is tailored for the 5.56, 5 5.45, 5 and 308 version. There is also a 7.62 by 39 and 300 blackout variant of this scope that has a similar reticle and is set for those two calibers. As with other versions of the ACSS reticle, it is currently set in yards and not meters. The reticle consists of a CQB horseshoe, chevron, and bullet drop compensation ladder. The large outer horseshoe of the reticle is designed for very close quick target acquisition during close quarters battle. Just like ATOGs and other ACSS reticles, it has several features that assist with range determination of your target. The reticle is set for the average adult male's shoulder to shoulder torso of 18 inches. If your target's shoulders are the same width as the bottom of your chevron's point to point, your target is approximately 300 yards away. Now look at the vertical bullet drop compensation ladder. Match up the corresponding hash marks with your target's shoulder to shoulder torso. The one that fits is the estimated distance to your target. In this example I have right here, your target is approximately 400 yards away. In this example, your target is approximately 600 yards away. Now in addition to using the enemy's shoulder width to estimate their range, you also have the capability of estimating them vertically by height. To do this, you simply place the standing target's feet on the baseline, which is the bottom of your bullet drop compensation ladder. You then observe where your target's head corresponds with. If your target's head is at the bottom of the tip of the chevron, your target is approximately 500 yards away. If his head aligns with the top of the post, your target is approximately 600 yards away. Anything taller than this will be within 400 yards. In Vegas, Bruce and I actually did practical application with Dimitri where we ranged each other from 100 all the way out to 800 yards using the different features of the ACSS reticle. The vertical ranging feature is the one I found to be the easiest and most effective and definitely an invaluable asset when trying to estimate your enemy target's range. Once you have acquired the estimated range of your target utilizing one of these techniques, you would then simply just engage them by using the corresponding marks on your bullet drop compensation ladder. So moving on from range estimation, I want to go back to the top of the reticle and talk about the outside edge of the left and right of the horseshoe. The edge of the horseshoe is calibrated to where you'd be holding when engaging a man who is running laterally while holding a rifle. It is said that the average man moving under those circumstances moves at a speed of approximately 8.6 miles per hour. So essentially, what you would do if engaging an enemy that is within 300 yards, you would engage him using the outside edge of the horseshoe and once the round is fired, he and the round will connect in the same spot. The reticle also has pre-placed dots which are calibrated for where you should hold on a target with a 5 or 10 mile per hour crosswind at a respective distance. So after you have acquired the estimated distance to your target and you have an approximate 5 or 10 mile per hour crosswind, you would place the corresponding dot on their torso and engage. These features greatly increase your capability of scoring a first round hit on a target with the different variables that come into play when engaging enemy combatants on the battlefield. The reticle is very well thought out and is definitely increases an in individual infantryman's combat effectiveness. All right guys, so this is my first string of fire uh, BZO with this optic on this rifle. Uh, last time I BZO'd this optic was on my Daniel Defense, so I know I gotta make some adjustments here. So I'll fire three rounds, go down range, make my adjustments and uh, take it on from there. Alright, let's go check it out. 
All right, guys, so here's my groups. One, two, three at 100 yards. Um, obviously, I'm hitting high, so I'll have to make some adjustments here. So one click on the ACSS Raptor is a quarter inch at 100 yards. So I'll make these corrections, and then uh, we'll shoot another string. All right, so check it out. All right guys, that was my second stream. Um, I just wanna let you know that it is freaking balls hot out here. <laughs> it is so hot that the damn vultures are literally just swarming overhead waiting for me to die. You guys see that? So yes, this is the sacrifice I'm making for you guys right now. But in any event, let's, uh, let's check it out. All right, so one, two, three. Um, looks like we had one that was good and the other two are just outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume that this is a fluke and this is where I'm uh, probably impacting. So I'll make an adjustment based off of this. So this is the second string. Let's make another one, make another uh, adjustment here and then hopefully we'll be on from there. Let's go check it out. All right guys, so it looks like it's on. So I got a one, two, three, and then it looks like I have a flyer down here. But uh, for the most part, we're in there. So uh, I'm good with that. We'll uh, go ahead and push it back to 200. All right, 200 yards, 10 rounds. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like they're all there. The most of them are uh, inside this diamond here, and then they got two outliers. So pretty good, guys. Two hundred yards. That was uh, my results on essentially uh, a rapid fire. Um, you know, firing rapid succession, not sitting there and taking you know forever and a day to, to fire each individual shot. So pretty good, guys. Uh, again, couple of that with the. Uh, you know, the results I had out there in Nevada, you know, four or 500 yards, you know, just ringing silhouette size steel and low light conditions. So excellent freaking optic. But in any event, here's the uh, results from uh, 200. Well, that's it guys. That includes this video on the ACSS Raptor. I want to thank you guys once again for watching this video. If you're liking what you're seeing, don't forget to check out my channel and subscribe. Also, I want to remind you guys, if you're interested in any of the primary arms optics that I've reviewed in the past, don't forget to check out those links. Typically, those links will give you free shipping, 
and either a free mount or an anti-reflection device, depending on which optic you are. Thanks again, guys. Good shot. Semper Fidelis, keep fighting the good fight. This is for the first hash mark? Yeah. I guess it's on. Dude, this is a phenomenal optic. <laughs> <laughs> I like this shit. Dude, I can't see through my ACOG clear at all. I can't either.